Hi, it's Linda. I'm here to show you my entry for uh, Jessica of Paper Terrace's event called Dollar Tree Journal. And what I'm making is a portfolio. I guess it's called a portfolio. Maybe it's called a folio. But anyway, it's got multiple panels. And I'm working currently on the inside. And I have a um, I have this signature ready to go in, to stitch in, which I haven't done yet. What I'm going to go ahead and show you now is how I used a junk mail envelope to make a flip to go on the panel that's made from the manila envelope, which is on the, the right side of the screen here. And um, what I did is I covered parts of it with napkin and glue, decoupage, and I'm going to uh, put it on the envelope, and I've used a stencil to put the swirls on there with some vintage photo and I'm gluing the flap that I attached to the junk mail envelope inside the envelope the manila envelope to hold it to the side and it it's going to be um, a flap that goes to the inside of that and I'm using my um, turbo tacky glue Aileen's brand to glue that in I'm happy with Aileen's brand glue. It um, This glue gl dries a little bit fast, and when I was uh, making that envelope, I made a little bit of a mistake on using the glue and made it too thick, so I had a bit of a bump there where I was pointing to it just then. But I'm spreading this out on the flap, and it's going to go on the inside of the, the envelope, but leave it open so that I can have a pocket there. And I'm making sure that I don't um, have too many very wet spots because the manila envelope is um, a bit sensitive to the liquid and buckles up pretty easily if you're not careful. So anyway, that's what I'm working on there is getting the glue right. And I'm inserting that inside the envelope with just a little bit of space there so that it will fold it over and not try to pop up and smoothing it down. I use that same Tim Holtz Swirls um, stencil to make the um, junk envelope, junk mail envelope, match the other envelope better. And I also use that eyeshadow eye that you see up there in the top right um, to darken the, the paper itself. It was a white envelope when I started. And there's the, the stencil that I used, the Tim Holtz stencil. I'm talking about that again. That's the spot that I had a bit of trouble. The way I put that envelope on the edge of the file folder, I made a um, tab that goes inside the envelope and glues down to the file folder. And when I stuck it inside the envelope, it kind of buckled up there. I had a bit of trouble with that. And the I don't particularly like that junk mail envelope because it had that little window that I'm showing there. And um, I've covered the file manila file folder with a um, piece of napkin and glued it down with Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength glue stick and stamped the five up there to show through the, the window in the envelope. When you glue down the napkin, you press it down really well to the file folder so it stays down and it, it bonds pretty well. And I did a, a, a tab on the side using one of the tabs on the file folders and put a uh, one of the key stickers on there as a dangle and I put some scotch tape on the back to cover up the sticky because I didn't have any success removing that from the from the sticker and I also cut a little uh, round piece and put some some of the flour from the envelope from the napkin on it and tied it on with a piece of baker's twine I'm talking about the 
the flower that I glued on there from the, uh, and I stamped a seven on the back so it would have something interesting on the back. And on the back, I used one of my note cards, a piece of it to put at the top of the, of the tag because I had stitched on there with a zigzag stitch and it didn't look that pretty on the back. And I wanted a little more of the color and to bring some of that uh, aqua color in to the, um, to that side of the tag and it goes right back in there and I use some of the mesh the snowy mesh is what I'm calling it it has those flakes on it for the tag topper and I like the way it sticks up there I'm going to put I used a, a uh, the Tim Holtz slots I'm not sure what the name of that die is but I call it the slots pocket it has slots that you can put things in and I instead of running it all the way through my die cutting machine I stopped before I got to the the top where I have that tab place on there because I wanted to keep that um, as the top on it to not to hide the fact that I'm using these manila folders um, I'm using some of the tabs to give a nod to the origins of this this journal And I'm marking where I'm going to glue it down. This is all an experiment for me. My brother gave me a microphone, and I'm really happy to have it. But I've made a mistake when I first tried it out, and I turned on the airplane mode so that I didn't get any recording. So now I'm learning to do voiceover. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm hoping this will turn out okay, so we'll see what happens. But thank you my, very much, my brother. I appreciate you thinking about this for me, and I hope it helps that I have better sound on my videos once I get used to it. Anyway, I'm gluing this pocket down with the uh, Turbo Tacky Glue that the brand is Aileen's. And I decided to go with the, the amount that I have in this little um, dispenser that I got at Hobby Lobby. It has a a narrow nozzle and it does it comes out just a little bit at a time so that you don't get great gobs of glue where you don't need it and apparently it was not wanting to come out because I'm shaking it a lot and I'm gluing across there and as you can see <laughs> This has been really an interesting project to do, and I've re I'm really enjoying it because it's so challenging sometimes when you think about um, you're limited to the 16 items, basically. I mean, you can use your, your glues and your scissors and inks and things like that, and stencils. I'm, I'm kind of stretching it with the stencil, I feel like, and also with that die cut, but to um, work around some of the challenges you have of things you might normally use, like maybe using some fabric to strengthen a, a uh, hinge and you don't have fabric except for the, the snowy mesh that I have. And it, I guess I could use that for a hinge on the journal, but I didn't really want to do that because that, that snow stuff kind of wants to flake off if you bend it around a lot. And I don't want to have it totally overtaking my, my journal. So that is on there now, and the junk journal flip that I just showed has a pocket on the front. I didn't show the pocket, but it does have that. And I'm going to use that piece of file folder that I had right there, that one, to cover up the uh, where the manila envelope material is strengthening the spine and the, where I attach the envelope to the, to the back of the journal instead of that mesh that I just showed there. I'm going to sew my signature into that spine. I haven't decided for sure exactly how I'm going to do that. but I probably will do a three-hole pamphlet stitch there. This is the cover that I did with the napkin glued down to the manila folder. And um, I am talking about adding the mesh to the front and a butterfly die cut and also I'm going to put a book plate on there as well. 
I'm showing here how the folder opens up with the inside cover on the left and the center is the signature and on the right side is the uh, junk mail that I turned into a flip. So that's what you're seeing here. And then I'm folding it back up again and showing where the Manila envelope fits onto that page. And this is the back cover with the Manila envelope that I turned into a double flap. And I attached it to that file folder with a, I'm showing you there where it's attached. It's a tab that I made that has legs that go into each side of that manila envelope and is glued down there to hold it all together. Here I have the manila envelope folded back on itself and I indicated where the flap goes into those two sections of it and it's glued to both pieces on both sides and that was a real trick to get that in there. And this is the other side, the back side of the manila envelope that's going to be, it'll be what you see on the back when you first pick up the book and turn it over. And I did um, a flap on to where the original flap was. I cut it back a little bit and glued a piece of the file folder to that and added the um, napkin on it and a, a doily to cover up that part too. And then on the inside, I stenciled the butterflies and added a doily there. It's got the pocket inside. And I put a piece of uh, the time card that I dyed with some of the eyeshadow shadow to a better shade of um, green. It was kind of white and standing out too much before. I like this much better. On the left side, I cut a piece of file folder and I had stenciled it with the swirls again to make a tab, or a tab, I guess, to tuck the flap into to close that flap down. And then on this side, this is the other side of that page, and I just brought the doily around to the other side. I made a flap there, and I'm going to insert the small sig signature that I took from the little um, notebook that I bought at Dollar Tree. There's the notebook. It's called Stuff, and it has signatures sewn into it so that I was able to cut the threads there and take out pages to create the signature to go in in this book, in this part. And the paper is a um, pretty nice paper in that little book, so that I'm showing where that's going to fit in. And I've done some stitching around some of the pages to decorate some of them. I still need to do some work on it. And that was the back page there. So um, back to the inside again. I don't know why. <laughs> to show you the, the uh, signature going there, I suppose. And I had a problem with the page that I, stenced, I stamped a butterfly on the inside of it and um, it bled through to the front side and so I tore the page off and I put some um, distress ink on that edge to um, stain it. It's called worn lipstick. It's a new little small pad that I have and I dyed that. And I, I like the way it turned out. It kind of goes along with the the esthetic writing I did there with the little flowers and and uh, adds a little more interest to have that short page there. And I'm just showing a few things I did in this um, signature to decorate some of the pages. I sense a little key on there and I used the, some of that eyeshadow to, to uh, blend in with that. On this page I used the Soap Saver um, sponge thing to put the design on this page is used as, as a stamp and it it made a nice background on that and I added that tab that says five on it on that page and I'm talking about adding maybe an edge on another page with that same soap saver thing there I just did some asymmetric writing and I did use my watercolors to put a rose behind it on this page that also had the soap saver design on it, I decided to use some of the snow mesh to make a ruffle at the bottom of the page to act as a tab. And I have a small stapler that I've had for years. It's a swing line stapler. It has slightly smaller than average staples in it. And I'm going to use a technique that I learned from Natasha from Treasure Books 
to use a marker. This is an oil-based gold marker, metallic marker. And the brand is um, Decol Color. And I'm going to just color those staples with it and just um, let it dry just a minute. And then you can put them back in your stapler and use them. And hopefully the, <laughs> the gold is good on it. Now I'm putting the staples back in and turning the page to staple it. I'm sorry it's almost out of the picture, but I put two staples in, in on each side of the, the ruffle. And then I decided to add a, a third one in the middle. And I think I went back and retouched that gold after I had the staples in the, in the fabric. I also used my jewelry pliers to go back and uh, squeeze those staples down so they're flat on the back side and I probably will stick some washi tape or something over that on that side because it is not the prettiest on the, on the back side. Here I'm talking about what I plan to do on this panel. I'm going to use the Tim Holtz stencil again and the speckled egg distress oxide ink to, stenc to stencil the design on that panel and I plan to put a um, covered paper clip at the top to clip a, either a notepad or maybe something else up there. And I have a, a pocket that I'm going to add at the bottom of that page. Thank you so much for being with me today as I learned two new techniques using my new microphone. Thank you, brother. And learning to do voiceover because of my mistake. I hope you found something in this video that was helpful to you and I will see you next time when I show the finished journal, I hope. Bye.